Yeah, I just prefer it. <laughs> no, please. Not in the studio. <laughs> you just prefer it not being made at all. <laughs> it's not even dry. I'm it sorry. is dry, dude. That is like. <laughs> it's not fr- dry. That's moist. Look, it's moist. No. It, well, then, okay, I'm sorry. It's not good. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, try and do something nice for somebody. And no, thank you. I appreciate it. But I'm just going to be honest, right? You asked me to that's be all, honest. That's all sucked. I want. Right. So, yeah. Well, Everything else I've tried that you've made is pretty good, but that, nah. Mm-hmm. So, what didn't uh, you like about it, Bree? The whole thing. <laughs> yeah, see, Senator, we're, we're going to bring on uh, <laughs> Senator Marsh Titano because I think you and uh, Bree agree. You guys like lemon with coconut milk. Yeah. And that, that's, that's it, the right? That's bomb. But this, this like, it's so pretty. Like he, it like does he, look pretty. I know. Some coconut flakes. <laughs> I did. Bam, you know, but oh no. Yeah. Just Sorry, tear down my work, Bree. Tear it down. You know. Yeah, I put coconut flakes, which I toasted for you. You, you know. made it fancy. Appreciate that. But... There were no Virgo tears shed during the making of this lemon cake. They all came after Bree tried it. <laughs> Senator uh, Marsh Titano, you want some lemon cake? You know, I am willing to try it. Now, did you put honey in it to to make it moist? Okay. Uh-huh. Exactly what I did, even though Bree said it was not moist. I did drizzle for shizzle some honey on the top of it because <laughs> I wanted to make sure it had that, like, you know, sweet. But, alas, it was all for naught. Well, have you tried the My Donuts, though? Have you tried making those? Those are always winner. Yeah, it's funny that you say that, Senator, because um, I do make lemmy donuts, and I just perfected my lemmy recipe, but I wanted to bring something different this morning because we have a lot of donuts, and I was like, let me go out of my way to make a lemmy cake for Sabrina and the team just to show them, you know, because, yeah, donuts, okay, whatever, but when you go and bake a cake for somebody... Dude, sorry, <laughs> but, you know, and he spent last week, Friday, he kept building up... Oh, I made these lemon donuts. It was so good. Gave That's me, how I you sound. Know, I put the like the banana That's donut recipe, and you put the baking powder and all this well, stuff. He, he's going on and on about how he makes these great lemon donuts, right. and then he brought in this cake, and it was yuck. <laughs> yeah, you thought. But you know, donuts can be stacked into a cake shape. That's also a winner. This is like Tello versus Ray round two. <laughs> All right, Senator, let's get official now here on uh, the Breeze 93.9. So we wanted to bring you on. I guess just first of all, we'll start. While we were on leave, was, did you get like a bill passed about the uh, primary election and in-office voting or something? Absolutely. And it goes into effect, in a sense, this Thursday. So we will be able to have that flexibility. You know that saying about uh, we're not all in the same boat for COVID-19, it's absolutely true. And COVID-19 is hitting us in so many different ways. It's making it harder to find childcare. It's making it harder perhaps to ask for time off if one is still working. And, you know, we might be afraid of going to big crowded areas, even though we're finding out that on Guam, we're, we're flattening the curve and we're staying pretty low. And then if the process is going to be slower because of all of the safety measures, which we want those safety measures, but it will make the process slower. And if people um, are going to have difficulty standing in line and things like that, this gives them 30 days of flexibility to make an appointment, go down or walk in at the right times to the Guam Election Commission, where everybody's a notary and everything's official and the safe is right there for your vote to go into after it's sealed into an envelope. Um, you have, because of Bill 330, which turned into public law 35-95, we now have a little bit more flexibility in our lives to take care of something really important, like deciding who your leaders are going to be and and whether your values are going to be represented and your beliefs and principles are going to be represented for the next two to four years in the legislature, but also in your villages and in Congress. (laughs) (laughs) 
Yeah, so that that's uh that's one of the things that happened when we were on leave, and I I remember I was talking to Maria Pangolina, and she was like, oh, da, 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 and I was like, what? So I had to check, and yeah, so. Uh, how were you able to get this uh, passed so quickly? Do you want to thank your colleagues maybe for getting behind this measure? Absolutely, and I'm very proud that it's a, a bipartisan support. Everybody was there, voted for it, and it didn't take the governor long to sign it into law either. You know, we worked with the Guam Election Commission for about three and a half months, shortly after the pandemic and the state of emergency was called nationally and locally, we started looking at uh, things that were necessary for our community to keep things as safe as possible. And uh, we worked with them. We wanted an option that was gonna be safeguarding the votes as much as possible, but also hopefully really making a difference for our community and, and providing them options, options that are safe. So they will be safe in the uh, Guam Election Commission office because they are strictly and very closely following public health guidelines, but it will also make the polling station safer because it's potentially there are going to be thousands fewer out there uh, because they've already taken care of their voting. All right. Uh, so we, we asked Senator Tello to maybe kind of bring us up to speed with uh, some of the things happen on, happening in the minority. With the majority, uh, what's the focus for you guys during this budget process? Yeah, you know, during this budget process, I've really been encouraging the agencies under my oversight, well, and, and it has to be everybody, but especially so the agencies under my oversight, to be creative, to develop partnerships, to look for grants, um, and to be doing what they can to not be as, as reliant on some of their funding sources because they are impacted and we all have to realize that. So we need to continue to do that. And then on my part, part of what I've done is I've really shifted to uh, economics has always been part of my focus, but it's now a hard shift to making sure that economics it, and diversifying our economy, which we've talked about kind of since ever since, but we need to really make it happen. And, um, and looking for ways that are more sustainable and less dependent on outside forces with our economy. So I've been spending a lot of time and, and I'm going to continue to over the months just really look at what our options are. And, and there's some pretty interesting models out there uh, that I've been starting to look at. Mm -hmm. but, you know, before, before we uh, let you go, I wanted to touch on um, the Department of Parks and Recreation, because I know this is something that you, you know, with the, oh gosh, I remember before COVID, the situation with the, the swimming pools. Right. And I believe you recently held an informational briefing and we have a new director. Uh, what's his name? Roki, Roki Alcantara now? <laughs> yes. So, sorry, I may have talked over your actual question. Sorry about that. No, I just wanted if you could bring us up to speed with oh. the Department of Parks and Recreation. I believe that you held a, a, a hearing, an informational briefing just recently. And there's a new director. I think it's the second uh, director in the past several months. Yeah. Maybe even third. I, I, I've lost track. There's been different directors moving around. Yeah, no, we counted the other day. And since the beginning, there have been, he's the sixth, because uh, we had a director, then we had uh, acting director, then we had another, and then um, DPW stepped in as acting, and then we had another one, and then DPW stepped back in. So he actually makes number six. So each, with each and every one of them, I have sat them down for hours, and I have talked to them about what they need to do to get things in order. And this director is no different. After the informational hearing, I sat down with him for two hours the next day, and then I attended their first board meeting on the day after that. So, you know, some of the things that I emphasized is we keep on getting these budgets that aren't properly assessing their management needs, their personnel needs, their equipment needs. And I keep on sending their budget back and saying, no, this needs to be accurate. Now, in this day and age, this COVID-19 crisis, it's going to be even harder to, to find them that money 
locally, but they can avail themselves of Department of Interior grants, USDA grants, other grants, and they need to do that hard work to get those personnel beefed back up. They used to have 200 people, we're now down to 41. They need to stop giving me a budget that says, you know, it's the same budget as last year because our people deserve more than that. So this director um, and the others beforehand, they just uh, weren't around long enough, but this director is also taking a hard look at his management needs, his personnel needs. And for that board of directors that is now in place, we had that meeting on Friday. We finally got enough people in panel my committee and other people had given name after name after name to get that board and panel but it was the first board meeting since 2016. Wow. so we are slowly but surely and i do wish it was quicker but we are slowly but surely getting that department into into shape into order into structure it needs it and i've also told them they need to do their reaching out in a government we're supposed to be one government. We're supposed to be helping each other. So DPR has helped others. This is the time for the Guam Police Department and they are helping uh, park rangers. And um, we just need to build on that and have even more. We need to work even more with DPW and get them to help out more with maintenance at least at this time until we get people into place. We need GVB to continue to help out even more and be that strong partner. They've been a great partner in the past. We just need to build on it. So, you know, I was really encouraging our new director to do these things for the good of everybody. Uh, Senator, how much is the, the uh, musical chairs at the directorship, how much does that affect the department's ability uh, to move forward and perform the, at least the very least, the, you know, mandated responsibilities that they're supposed to do? No, that's a really good question. And it's it's something um, that has been, well, frustrating. Because, you know, in January, we thought we were getting things aligned. And then every time we have our, our follow-up oversight hearing or, or an informational briefing, it's had to be postponed or canceled because there's been a, a shift of new leadership. But this, this you know, I, Part of it, it maybe is that the right fit to maybe takes a while and, and you know, I'm, I think it's been unfortunate, but I want us to, to build on what we have in place. This acting director, he's a procurement officer. He retired as such from GDOE. He's worked in the military. He's worked in the federal government. He's worked in the local government. He's worked in the private sector. He's a grant writer. He's uh, been a contractor and overseen and managed contracts. So we really want those skills to be put into place and work for the department to, like I said, shape it up. And the other thing, it's been a good week uh, for getting things into order. One of my earlier laws uh, 35, I think it was 56, it empowered the Island Beautification Task Force to head up programs that look at littering, well, not just look at, but it's to be preventing it, littering, illegal dumping, and public facility destruction. There's, you know, we all know there's too much of it going on. It's such an issue. And so they had their first meeting the other day last week, and they did start tackling it. Um, DPW is heading up the littering, I think it's littering and maybe illegal dumping. He's littering, uh, he's heading up that subcommittee and Robert Camacho has offered to uh, train a park patrol reserves. And so uh, we wanna build it up that way, there have been people who have volunteered and they've come up to me and others and, and asked how they can help and volunteer. And we're really also building up our adopt a park program. Again, we have people that are coming up to the new director and myself and just asking to please let them adopt the park. So we're trying to put as many things into place 
to make some real change noticeable and make some real change happen. All right, Senator. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, we got to run. There's a bunch of stuff happening outside uh, in the world around us. So we uh, appreciate you joining us on uh, Zoom here, Senator Kelly Marsh Titano, the majority leader of the Guam well, Legislature. Thank you, and and uh, have a great program. This is your inaugural episode, so I'm looking forward to many, many more. Right Thanks, on, you, Senator. You let me know if anyone wants to order any lemon cake. <laughs> or lemon donuts stacked in the shape of a cake since your lemon donuts seem to be a, a winning amongst the crowd there what a, what a classy <laughs> refusal that was thank you senator thank okay. you have a great day uh, she's like yeah cake and eh, not really yeah uh, that's the truth though no, thank you Bree. hey you know i appreciate the honesty it looked good though right yeah it looked very fancy but looks can be deceiving. Amen. It is what it is. <laughs> Nine twenty. Uh, <laughs> let's bring on the president of the mayor's uh, council of Guam.